Hey, thanks everybody for watching. The question we're going to look into today is who was Cain? So we need to know a few fundamentals about the periodic table of history. It shows all of history, all the kings, all the way back to Adam, according to the Hebrew record. And we're talking about 6,000 years ago to modern history right here. You have United Kingdom over here on the left side of the graph, and you have the United States over here on the right side of the graph with, say, Korea right here. And we're talking specifically about Cain. Who was Cain? So we have to go to the, the history of Israel. So we're going to, okay, let's zoom in here. And we'll see, this is where Israel became a nation in 1948. That gives us some perspective. Okay, so let's put a few markers in here that Jesus was about right here. Then we have uh, the time of David. The flood was about right here. I mean, I'm just approximating it because I'm trying to get the, the arrows on here. And then we're going to look into the life of Cain, which is right up here. It's instructive to see um, the different colors. I just I, I put these these red lines of Cain and his descendants in here. Okay, let's just zoom up on here so we can see his, his name. Here, second generation, uh, the first son of Adam and Eve. His name is Cain. And that according to the Hebrew record. So these red bars represent the lifespans of the uh, descendants of Cain. And we over here at the blue, over here at the blue right here, uh, descendants of Adam. And then and we have the... Uh, Right here, this is uh, pre-flood Samaria, uh, has the first city as Iridu, which I think that's a lot of fun to look at these three zones of history. And I'm going to highlight Cain right now, give him a different color so that we can hopefully see this a little bit better. Okay, there he is. And... So let's let's jump into that. It gives us our perspective. We can look at uh, this pre-flood era, or we can zoom out and see all of history. In Genesis four, the narrative shifts from Adam and Eve to the feud between Cain and Abel, and the genealogy of Cain and the inventions of Cain's family line in the pre-flood world. And the first brotherly feud arose, resulting in the first murder. And the first murder is the greatest legacy of Cain, but his leadership continues through his descendants. So I encourage the viewer to read Genesis 4 now. So this is where we get the famous words, Am I my brother's keeper? Spoken from the mouth of a murderer. Do you sense the lack of empathy from Cain towards Abel and the selfishness of Cain? I'll zoom in here to... to Abel, lifespan of Abel. And we can see that um, possibly Abel only lived in this very short lifespan. And then, because uh, the Genesis moves on and talks about, and Adam and Eve had Seth, it seems, after the events of Cain and Abel. I think to myself, wow, the murderer is concerned that people may murder him. And we think, poor, poor Cain. I don't really think that, but it's, it's kind of funny when you read Genesis 4. Now, because God is merciful, God set a mark on Cain. And it's important to remember that, that Cain died before the flood, and his descendants died in the flood. So whatever the mark of Cain is, it is not something we see today. You know, we can't judge people today by some skin-deep attributes and think somebody has the mark of Cain. Uh, it was a pre-flood attribute, and the flood happening here at this other arrow, and all of Cain's descendants would have died there in the flood. So Scripture goes on, Genesis 4.17. It says, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. 
and it's fun like I, I said before you have the first city about right there and you have Cain's lifespan right here with Enoch's lifespan as um, as the uh, the second bar that goes all the way down to to this area past where archaeologists put Iridu. Uh, so where did Cain get a wife from? And then uh, we look in Genesis 5, 4, and the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begot sons and daughters. So we see right there that even though we only have a few names of some of the descendants of Adam, uh, Adam and Eve had lots of sons and daughters that are not named. So that is probably where we get the uh, wife of Cain from. Now, if you go back to the young earth worldview, one of the fundamental guesses is that the universe is moving from order to disorder, and that goes for the DNA of men and women. The first couple of people were perfect, made by God, then sin and death set in, then genetic degradation started. See the book Genetic Entropy by Dr. J.C. Sanford. So present day, we are warned not to marry close relatives, and that's because if there is a destructive gene in both parents, there is no statistical chance that the child will get a good set of genes. So Charles Darwin married his cousin, and three of the ten children didn't make it past 11 years old. So the European Habsburgs believed that they had perfect genetics and therefore married close relatives, uh, leading to genetic deformations much to their frustration. But we always have to remember the present is not the key to the past. See, in the past, genetics didn't have time to degrade as we see today. So Cain would have married his sister, and since genetics of the second generation were not as degraded as genetics in the present day, they would not have thought it a shame. Though so Cain had great genetics, uh, the selfish attitude of Cain goes on. So remember, there are two tracks of thought, uh, to serve oneself or to serve our neighbors. And our lives shut down when we only think of ourselves, but our lives blossom in bounty whenever we solve problems of others. So this is a spiritual law that permeates our universe. We serve the Lord and we gain an abundance, 30 or 50 or 100 fold. And this bounty blesses all the people around us. But when we serve ourselves, we end up like Cain. The text states that God said in Genesis 4, 11 and 12, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So Cain was left to establish a city, and this allows him to take the strength of other people, for he was a farmer that couldn't produce any food anymore. So let us not get caught up in the mindset of Cain, but let us be generous and helpful and unselfish. And let's follow the line of Adam, the unselfish line that helps our neighbor. Uh, see 1 John 3, 11 and 12. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. So hopefully this video gives you perspective on the life of Cain. Be sure to write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to connect with you in the next video.